Grace and peace to you, church family. If you remember, we do a State of the Church address at the end of February each year and a Vision Sunday in early September of each year. That was supposed to happen this weekend. But in light of the news coming out of Eastern Europe, I think it's much more appropriate to lean on the Transfiguration Sunday text. And Luke 9 is the text that the Revised Common Lectionary lays out for us. I think it's an appropriate text for us to read. This is the story that we hold on to in times like these. Some words have to be spoken in light of another upcoming war. This morning, my wife Holly said to me, what should we do? And my answer was, we pray. We don't just post about praying. That is why I would really encourage you to make an effort and be in worship this Sunday. We will be gathering and praying together about our global issues. Our intention was to invite you to be a part of our State of the Church Sunday, but with all that's going on in the world, I'm going to make some initial comments and statements about the State of the Church and what is going on on the corner of Northwest 8th and Lee here in Oklahoma City. But then I am going to let the Luke chapter 9 text be our guide and our invitation to the table this week. Being concerned about our global neighbors is more appropriate than just worrying about our own needs and and what we need to have happen at our own church. I do not want to simply ignore or to be interior about who we are or what is happening in the world. Our people are anxious. You're anxious. I'm anxious. So I'd appreciate your prayers for me as I prepare words for the Sunday, and I'll be praying for you. Also, as you pray, pray for global leaders. Please pray for peace. Please pray for some sort of divine intervention. Please pray for the citizens of Ukraine. Please follow the command of Jesus and pray for our enemy, Vladimir Putin. And please, please pray for the church. The Orthodox Church, the Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, the Episcopalian Church, the Methodist Church, and even the Church of the Nazarene will be doing the hard work of care, the hard work of healing. They'll be doing the hard work of funerals, education, and peacemaking in that region. We would want them to be praying for us, so pray for them. They will be with the wounded and the dead and the left behind. Finally, if you don't know what to pray, as sometimes I don't know what to pray, I invite you to pray these words, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I invite you again on Sunday morning as we gather for prayer and as we gather to hear a story that shapes us. Grace and peace to you today and those who are around the world. I'll see you on Sunday.